Let's say you're doing a Java project and you're using JDK 11, and so you decide you want to use Java FX 11 for your front end. Uh, you might come to a page like this and say, yeah, I have Java 11 installed, and then you see there's a bunch of other steps in order to get Java FX working. Um, and these steps will work, but I want to show you what I think is an easier way. So I'm going to go to my IDE, IntelliJ IDEA, and I'll make a new project. But instead of choosing Java or Java FX, I'm going to manage the whole thing with Gradle. So notice that Java is selected there, and I'm running uh, JDK 11. Uh, for group ID, I'll just put in a package name. And for my artifact ID, I can just put in the name of the project, like a tutorial video. Um, the defaults here are OK. I do like to use auto import, and I'll explain in a couple of minutes what that does. Um, and here, I'm just going to give this a slightly more human-readable name. So what will happen is uh, here IntelliJ IDEA has opened up and we can see that Gradle is running. So Gradle is, is bootstrapping itself right now. It's downloading all of the libraries that it needs and it's configuring this empty project. So we'll just have to wait a moment for that to finish. Okay, so that's all done. Now we can look at the uh, uh, layout of the project, we have a source folder, and inside of it has a main and a test folder, because Gradle doesn't just give us a nice build system, it also gives us some expectations of how the project layout will be. So we see inside of here, uh, we have places for our source code and for our resources, that's neat. The whole thing is driven, though, by this build.gradle file. So this is the one that was generated for the project, and by default it doesn't support JavaFX. So let's go in and add that support, and we can do that with a really useful plugin for Gradle. So I'm going to copy the uh, actual string off of another screen. Here it is. So uh, notice that I saved the file, and Gradle is now running again because I've changed this build.gradle file. That's what that auto import did for me. Um, if I wanted to not use auto import, I could always go over here and click on the refresh project here, uh, and that would also kick off the Gradle project to get the plugin. Um, okay, so this tells it that we're using the JavaFX plugin. We also have to do some uh, customization of the plugin itself. So uh, we'll say JavaFX here. And we have to tell it what modules we want to use. And one that we're basically always going to use is JavaFX.controls. And once again, you see this sort of running as I type because I have the auto import turned on. So uh, the, the JavaFX.controls module, that's all of your uh, UI widgets, right? your, your labels and your buttons. Um, I'm also going to do a little bit of FXML in this example. So I'm going to load that module as well. That's good. I can also add in a particular version here of JavaFX, so I'll use 11.0.2. So like the plugin version number, you know, you can always check what the most recent release is at the time you're watching this video, but these are the most recent ones right now. Um, and you know, I can change that to uh, 11 as well as long as I'm here. Um, so good. So this gets us the minimal Gradle configuration for doing a JavaFX project. Um, but there's one other piece that's going to be really useful to me, and that is to tell Gradle that I'm making an application. So I'll use the uh, application plugin, and that allows me to specify a main class name. And I'll call that edubsucs main, uh, which of course doesn't exist yet, but uh, I'm about to make that. Uh, in fact, I think that's my next step. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, over here, we can make a new package, and inside, we can make the class. And we could say a uh, new Java class. We can skip a couple of steps by going right down to JavaFX application. It gives us a nice boilerplate. And, you know, if we click on this and hit Control q to bring up the Java docs, we can see that application is, in fact, from uh, a JavaFX package, so we know that the IDE is correctly compiling this whole system. That's good. Um, let's make a, a, just a real simple UI to make sure everything's working OK. So uh, I'll make a, a label, and I want to make sure I grab the one from JavaFX and not from AWT. Uh, label is a new label. We'll just say a conventional hello world here. And we're going to need to put that onto a scene. Let's see, Alt-Enter should give me the imports I need. Yep. And then uh, we can say primary stage, set scene to be that scene, and finally show the UI. 
Okay, so let me show you something. If I run this in the conventional way, which, you know, for some people is clicking on this button, I've always been a fan of looking for it in this browser, right-clicking and saying run, but they do the same thing. Uh, this will actually fail because IntelliJ IDEA doesn't know where the JavaFX runtime uh, components are. Um, and this is where you, you could go in and you could modify your system configuration to go and find wherever you install those runtime components, but that's exactly what we're trying to avoid. So our solution here will be to run the whole thing through Gradle. So again, pop open Gradle on the side. We can see all the different tasks that Gradle has defined for us. And because we're using the application plugin, we get a task here called run. So if I right click and say run, what we see down in the console here is Gradle is going to run all the tasks that are required, and then, sure enough, pop up, pops up the UI. Pretty cool. Um, if I had some unit tests I wanted to run, uh, that's done under verification and test. So, uh, you know, just for the sake of uh, clarity, let's make a class here called sample test, and we can put into here. Uh, let's see, just a very minimal test I can think of would be something like assert dot assert true, true. And Alt Enter to bring in the right imports. Good. So again, I can right click on this, say run. Now, if you don't like going to these options and right clicking and saying run, oh, I'm surprised that failed. Yeah, that should be public. That's a minimal test. There we go, test succeeded. Um, so if you don't like doing this approach, remember that uh, your most recent uh, executions are all stored up here. So I can choose run from there or choose test from there and run it like that. Okay, so that gets all the, the bare bones pieces that we needed to make this work. Um, but just to flesh out the example again a little bit more, let's do some FXML as well. So let's say that instead of having our, our uh, program build the UI, we want to specify the view in an FXML file. So I'll go over to uh, resources and I'll say make a new FXML file. And I'll call it main.fxml. And its controller will be our main class that we made. And inside of here we'll put a label and just to distinguish it we'll say uh, hello again. Uh, and of course, if you wanted to, you could use Scene Builder to drag and drop the widgets. But uh, you know, the video here is not really about FXML. This is just good enough for us. Um, back to main. Well, here, uh, main is in a package called edu.bsu.cs, but main is just at the root level. And I really like to have my FXML files in uh, the same name package. So I'm going to just move that real quick. I'll refactor and move. And uh, keep in mind that the uh, dot notation of packages like edu.bsu.cs, those uh, map to folders on the file system. So if I say edu.bsu.cs here, that moves us into the package that I want. And, and notice the IDE even has this rendered as a package and not just as a set of nested folders. Um, good, so back in main, I can get rid of this and instead of creating it uh, programmatically, I can use FXML. So we can say FXML loader, load, we have to give it a location. So if I say get class, get resource, main.fxml, uh, this gets us the class object, um, which is in this package, and then it loads a resource with this name, and it should, again should look in the same matching package. So that's uh, one of the reasons for structuring it this way. Um, this can throw IO exception, true, so let's just uh, surround it with a try catch and just propagate this one out. Um, we need to get a handle on this result, so let's make a, a parent. Again, Alt Enter to import the class and then say this will be my root. And I'll say root there. All right, save that. Run it again, and sure enough, now it's loading the view out of the X FXML file. So once again, I think this is really convenient. Uh, Gradle is a nice system to know anyway, uh, and it makes it really painless to be able to do JavaFX. You just have to remember to run all your tasks through here, rather than by clicking on these buttons there. I hope that's useful for you. See you next time.